You're about to watch part two of my Trailblazer series. If you missed part one, you can find the full playlist at the top of the description. Thank you so much to today's incredible Patreon sponsors, Brigadus and Yacht. So this will probably be a fast-paced video because I have a lot of progress to show in a short period of time. Here is the elusive rune axe drop, which I got here. I also picked up a blue wizard robe top along the way at Wizard's Tower for a little bit more magic bonus. After that, I decided to train my defense just to have some durability versus all the quest bosses and monsters I needed to fight. I didn't want to do too much training because you can do a lot of it through quests, but I also wanted to pick up a few strength levels here and prayer and HP as well. Because we unlocked the tier 2 relic in the last video, last recall, the XP rate has gone up from times 5 to times 8, so even combat training is very fast as well. So I did some skilling next. I did quite a bit of woodcutting and fire making and fletching and even fishing and cooking. These early levels are so much fun. Every single tree you get a level. Of course it slows down a little bit, but you get off to a really nice head start with the skilling prodigy. For example, the woodcutting is just going to be faster because you have that permanent plus 12 boost and you can skip to using some of the better axes right away or burning some of the better logs right away because the boost does apply for that. Fletching in particular seems to be an important one because my friend suggested it as a way to get some GP. These early bows are not going to sell for much, but eventually if I can start making things like U longbows, I'll be able to high alk them for quite a bit of GP to afford things like a dragon scimitar and maybe some rune armor as well, depending on the areas. So here are the results from all of that skilling, including some fishing and cooking here. So we got 33 fishing, 45 fire making, 52 woodcutting, did quite a bit of AFKing there, also 41 fletching, and here is 30 cooking. At this point I needed to get some sort of amulet, so I decided to fight imps at Karamja. Karamja is one of the areas you have unlocked by default, so we could make good use of the imp spawns at the volcano. Imps are of course the source of beads, which you need for the imp catcher quest. And I was actually able to complete this fairly quickly. It only took maybe 15 to 20 minutes or so, which is very lucky. Typically you can go a long time without getting all the beads because of the duplicates. But there we go. Some good magic XP as well. And the Amulet of Accuracy, which is certainly better than nothing because it gives good bonuses overall. Including for magic and ranged as well, which is very valuable. So I got an easy clue here, and I was actually very excited because it looked like it was going to be completable. Morgan and Draenor and Hans here, but then the next one is in Port Sarum, which I could not access without unlocking the area, so unfortunate there, can't complete it, but maybe I'll hold on to it for now. And the next step was to do some more questing. So Demon Slayer is a good one to do. You get Silverlight, which is very good versus Demons, and you also get a task done, so it's a little added bonus. I actually had a harder time with this than I thought because these Dark Wizards, I felt like someone just playing the game for the first time on their first day, almost dying to these Dark Wizards. They actually make it difficult to get in combat with Delrith. Ultimately, I persevered because Delrith only has 7 HP. Very easy quest, and I also picked up Rune Mysteries as well. It's a task, and also maybe I would need to do some rune crafting in the future. So with all those tasks completed, I was able to unlock Kandarin, which does seem to be a very good area to unlock because you get Ardoin, you get the Monkey Madness and Gnome areas, you also get Monkey Madness and Monkey Madness 2 pre-completed, so there's some perks to that. So I teleported here, and the first thing right off the bat was, it is so nice to have this infinite food source here with the cakes because previously I was so dependent on shrimp and anchovies and now I have bread which heals five and also the cake which heals four at a time but you can eat them faster and one whole cake is 12. Anyway so I had to get this rusty sword which took forever from the ham members for the Kandarin diary but I was able to get it and identify it. I also picked up a Tyrus helm here which is the equivalent of a steel full helm so not a huge upgrade, but it is better than the Iron Man helm that I was using. I kind of look like a Roman soldier in this gear, I think, with the red cape especially. But I will be getting an upgrade to the cape slot very soon anyway, with the RD diary completed here. This cape is very nice. It gives you infinite teleports to the monastery south of RD, 
which is basically infinite prayer when you combine it with the last recall relic. It also gives you some magic attack and defense as well as stab and prayer bonus, which can be difficult to obtain early on. There's not too many items that give prayer. So for the lamp, unfortunately, I had to use it on strength because it has a level 30 requirement to be able to use the lamp, which is kind of sad to waste it on something like that. I could have maybe planned this a little better, but the cape is going to save me so much time with the teleport anyway, so putting it off also doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Ideally, I would have gotten 30 prayer and used it on that, but I did get a book of knowledge here from the Mr. Mordot random. We got five levels from that, so a bit of a consolation prize. Because MM2 is completed, I was able to buy some royal seed pods. This is a fairly close teleport to a bank, and there's plenty of resources here. I also should mention that I upgraded my shield with an anti-dragon shield in Lumbridge. Here for the waterfall quest, we're going to grab two Glarial's amulets with the drop trick, and also grab the urn while we're here. And having some HP levels here made this much easier. I remember doing this quest on day one of old school RuneScape in 2013. There were so many people here that it actually made it very easy to do this quest because it was easier to get by the giants in the big crowd. So here's the gnome amulet from the king here, which actually gives plus 13 to melee defensive bonuses. Worth grabbing, although not very useful. I did complete the waterfall quest, which got me to 53 attack and strength. You can also fight fire giants in this dungeon, which drop rune scimitars and are decent for training. So I went ahead and did fight arena. This quest is very easy and quick. You can pretty much safe spot all of the bosses. You don't actually need to fight General Khazard, the final boss. You can actually just run away. But I did fight him here just because he has a ton of HP. And as with many of these quest bosses, he's only level 1 magic, so very AFK experience there. Might as well. I got level 53 magic on the way back to finish the quest, which is almost enough for high elk at 55. And there's fight arena, so even more combat levels. I still have all those nature runes from the spirit tree grind, so I'll be able to hopefully alk things until I can afford a dragon scimitar. And I'm already 58 attack, so I might just take the rune axe and use that for 60 attack, which would be enough. And that's really all I have to show for now, so we got 580 total. The stats are certainly coming along nicely. We are also progressing towards our next relic and area, which I'm not sure which I'm going to pick yet, so let me know your thoughts in the comments. What tier 3 relic and future area should I pick? Let me know your thoughts in the comments about this video. The first part was slower paced and I really took my time explaining things, whereas this time I went through everything fairly quickly because I had so much to show. I think there's advantages to both formats. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a part 3 to this, you can check it out in the description and in the playlist I mentioned at the beginning. I typically upload every Tuesday. You can join my clan chat up on screen and my Discord down below. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram down below. And if you would like to support the channel even further, you can check out my Patreon page in the end screen. And I'll see you all on Tuesday.